Hi, I'm Professor Gribbley, and I'm here to put fun in science. Welcome to ScienceToy.org. I'm Professor Gribbley, and this is the cartoon that uses toys to help children and adults have fun together while learning basic science, technology, engineering, and math. This is our Basic Electricity Cartoon Curriculum, Episode Number 2. In Episode 2, we will explore the following. What is a circuit? What is an energy source? What are conductors? What are loads? What are switches? Why are drawing symbols so important? This is part of our 12-episode series. In episode number one, we covered the safety rules. And since electricity can be dangerous, we strongly encourage you to watch episode one first and learn the safety rules. Click here to see the full episode, or click here to jump straight to the safety rules segment. The most important rule for staying safe is never try to experiment with electrical outlets. You can also click here to visit sciencetoy.org slash electricity and select another episode. Okay, we are going to build our first electrical circuit. But what is a circuit? Think of a circuit as a circle. You can put your finger anywhere on the circle and trace your finger around the circle and end up back where you started. Of course, a circuit does not have to be a circle, a rectangle, a star, or even just some squiggly lines can make a circuit, as long as you can trace your finger along the lines and end up back where you started, it can be made into a circuit. Since circuit and circle sound alike, thinking of a circuit as a circle makes it easy to remember. What is an energy source? Of course, we will be building an electrical circuit, so we need a source of electrical energy. An energy source is something that gives us the electrical energy we need to power something in our circuit. To be able to power something means having the ability to make something work. We can make this light work with electricity, and we can make this motor work with electricity. An energy source can be many things. We will learn much more about this in later episodes, but for now, we will be using two AA batteries as our energy source. They have electrical energy stored up in them for us to use as power. We will be using the Snap Circuits Junior Electronics Discovery Kit to build this circuit. You can click here to go to sciencetoy.org slash electricity to find links where the toys and other items we are using can be purchased. If you make a purchase using any of these links, sciencetoy.org will earn a commission on the sale. So thank you for supporting our cartoons. We will need to place our two AA batteries into this battery holder. Be sure to line up the plus and minus symbols on the batteries with the plus and minus symbols on the battery holder. Okay, now we are all energized, but the electrical energy has no place to go. This energy needs something to do. What are loads? In electricity, a load is something that uses electrical energy to do some kind of work. For example, a microwave oven uses electricity to do the work of heating up a snack. The AA batteries do not have enough power to make your microwave work, so in our circuit we will use a much smaller load, a small lamp. The work in our experiment will be illuminating or lighting up the small lamp. So let us review what we have learned so far. Electrical energy gives us the power we need to do work in our circuit. The load is the thing that uses the power to do the work. Okay, so now we have an energy source and we have a load with some work for it to do. 
but we do not have any way to get the energy to the load. We need some conductors. What are conductors? Conductors can be many things, but all good conductors will allow electricity to flow along them as well as water flows through this hose. We will perform some fun conductor experiments in another episode. But for now, here are the two most common examples of conductors we will be using. Number one is wires, and number two is snap wires. Both are found in your snap circuits kit, and both will let electricity flow along them as well as water flows through a hose. For our first circuit, we will use the wires. Let us connect the red wire to the plus symbol on the battery holder and then to one side of the lamp. But it does not light up. Why? Because the circuit is not complete. A complete circuit is one where you can trace your finger along it and end up back where you started. We cannot do that here. This is called an open circuit because it has an opening that will not let the electricity flow back to where it started. Okay, let us complete the circuit by connecting the black wire from the other side of the lamp and then connect it back to the minus symbol on the battery holder. Woohoo! It works! Now we have a complete circuit. You can trace your finger from the energy source along the first wire, through the load, and back to where you started at the energy source. Okay, we said a rectangle or other shape could also be used to make a circuit. Circle is just an easy way to remember circuit. So let's try making a rectangular circuit with these snap wires. And just as the circle of wires worked, so does the rectangle. You can trace the flow of electricity from the batteries through the lamp, along the rectangle, and back to the batteries, just as you did with the circle. What are switches? A switch is something that allows you to easily open and close the circuit, which in our circuit means allowing you to easily turn the lamp on or off. Did you notice that the lamp did not illuminate until the last snap wire was snapped in place? The last snap wire made the circuit complete and allowed electricity to flow. What if you wanted to turn the lamp off? Well, you could remove any of the snap wires, or you could remove a battery. You could even remove the lamp. Removing anything in the circuit leaves you with an open circuit. Electricity cannot flow through an open circuit. To tell if you have an open circuit, Try to trace your finger from the energy source around the rectangle and back to the energy source. You can't do it here. Your finger stops at the opening where you remove the snap wire. The electricity cannot jump over the opening that created the open circuit. In a complete circuit, all of the parts are in contact with the next part in the circuit. To be in contact, means to be touching together in such a way as to let electricity flow from one part to the next. When any part moves away from the next part, we call this breaking contact. Whenever we break contact, we have an open circuit and electricity cannot flow. This can be a good thing if you are trying to turn the lamp off. To make it easy to turn the lamp off, we will use a switch. So, let us replace one of the snap wires with this switch. When you press the switch down, you are making contact, which completes the circuit and allows electricity to flow, which turns the lamp on. When you let the switch up, 
you are breaking contact, which opens the circuit, stops the flow of electricity, and turns the lamp off. This all happens inside the switch, and we will talk more about what happens inside switches in another episode. Why are drawing symbols so important? They are important for at least two reasons. Number one, drawings help you plan, think, and remember. Number two, circuits cannot be built into the pages of textbooks or test papers, but drawings that represent circuits can. To help understand the importance of drawings and symbols, we need to learn two new words, component and schematic. In electricity, we call parts components. Let us take a closer look at the components in your Snap Circuits kit. This component is a battery holder. This component is a switch. The electrical engineers and Technicians that design and build circuits consider drawings so important that they have a special name for them. They call them schematic drawings. Most of the components in your kit have symbols on them. These are called schematic symbols. Schematic just means simple. They are simple and easy to draw symbols that represent components. The battery holder has a schematic symbol for battery. The switch has a schematic symbol for switch. And there are many more schematic symbols. We use symbols because it is too hard to draw a realistic picture of every component. Let us take a look at a schematic drawing that represents the circuit we built. The batteries would be represented by this symbol. The lamp would be represented by this symbol. The switch would be represented by this symbol. And all of the components would be connected by wire symbols, which are simple lines. As I said, drawings are good for helping you to think. Suppose you want to make sure you have a complete circuit before you actually build the circuit. You can trace your finger around the drawing to check this. We have built a very simple circuit. There are only three components, plus the wires. You could probably think through this simple circuit and remember it without a drawing. But many large electrical projects can have hundreds of circuits and thousands of components. You cannot remember this large number of circuits or components. Neither could you trace your finger through the circuits in your mind like you can on a drawing. Electrical engineers and technicians can trace their fingers along the lines and symbols on the drawing to make sure they have all of the needed components and to make sure that all of the circuits are complete. When a circuit is not working, they can refer to the schematic to see how the circuit is supposed to work. This helps them figure out what is wrong with the circuit and helps them to fix it. Schematic drawings are very important to students for one more reason. Circuits cannot be built into the pages of textbooks or test papers, but drawings work very well for this purpose. Schematic drawings are often used in textbooks and test papers and a good student will learn the schematic symbols for the components they will be using and learn to visualize the schematic drawing as a real circuit. The manufacturer of Snap Circuits, Elenco, has a drawing program that you can download for free and use it to plan your very own circuits. Click here to go to sciencetoy.org slash electricity where you will find a link to download Elenco's drawing program. You will need Microsoft Word to make this program work. Once you download it, you will be able to simply drag components into place to design your very own circuits.
In this episode, we have built our first electrical circuits. Tune in to our next episode where we will use that circuit for some fun experiments. In episode 3, we will explore the following. What makes a good conductor? What is an insulator? Conductor experiments. Why are both conductors and insulators important? What are semiconductors? Click here if you're ready for our next episode. In the meantime, go to sciencetoy.org for more science experiments, science projects, science toys, and science fun.